Okay guys, so how are you guys doing? I've been a bit sick for the past week or so, so I haven't been able to upload for a while. So uh, thank you for having patience with me. So so today I want to do a response video. Uh, you can say I, I want to discuss something that's been on my mind recently. I mean, I recently watched a video by John Mark on who would win the American Civil War 2.0 if it was waged today. And it was a very popular video, it had about 1.2 million views. And it's very impressive. The scenario is plausible and the Pentagon actually did war games based on the scenario. Now, I agree with most of the military analysis of this guy, but there are some questions I'd like to ask them. What about the intelligence community? In any civil unrest or revolution scenario, they will be the real opponents of the rebels. Their role is particularly greater in the modern era of mass surveillance and the internet. They can track almost every person with dissident leanings at all times, nip movements in the bud, or infiltrate, subvert, and corrupt movements if they seem to get wings. The ADL and the FBI did this with the KKK and former communist Jews did this to the John Birch Society. How would you counter the intelligence agencies? The only way I can think of is to go quiet or diversionary on the digital front and use non-digital, more analog ways of communication and organization. I mean, old school brick and mortar stuff, Morse code, code language, secret letters, signs, warehouses, that sort of stuff. A lot like how the Freemasons and the Illuminati organized in the days of the French Revolution. Digitally, the rebels could act like SJWs and leftists, but in the shadows, they could use analog methods to conduct activities and maintain maximum secrecy. If the US government doesn't know you, they can't subvert you. Now, there are also some things to consider when we are talking about civil war. I mean, he raised a very valuable point in that after 2024 or sometime maybe or, or even 2020 the GOP won't be able to win any more elections and the grassroots right will be stuck with leftist domination forever so at that point they will revolt now while this narrative is plausible there are some problems with it the first problem is the GOP going ever more leftwards the GOP has gone leftwards on cultural issues for decades, it has gone left on, on divorce, it has gone left on abortion. In many cases it has gone far to the left as far as gay rights are concerned. You know, Trump himself introduced a push to legalize homosexuality all across the world. It has accepted gay marriage and National Review is even writing about the conservative case for transgender rights. So my question would, to John Mark would be that, I mean, what if the GOP continues to go left and continues to strip the Republican voters or the grassroots right, as you might call it, into supporting even more milquetoast Zionist positions, neoconservative positions? I mean, just voting for the GOP. I mean, it's plausible that the GOP might be able to remain competitive by going further left on other issues. And then there are other issues like lack of testosterone. Now, the American po male population has a deficit of testosterone. Its testosterone is way below what it, u what it used to be in the previous generations. And this lack of testosterone has been... I mean, why this is the case, no one can exactly tell, but there are some suspects. There's obesity, there's hormones in the water, there's there's GMO food and, uh, and hormones being used on meat and, and, and all that sort of stuff. And carcinogenic substances in foods and, and air pollution. And then there's also the problem of men mostly doing sedentary work, where historically men did hard labor and this kept them physically fit and high testosterone. Most men now mostly sit around on desks and do sedentary work. So testosterone, the thing that makes males violent, the things that makes them revolutionary, that makes them courageous, makes them go out and take on the world, that testosterone level is at a record low in the West and, and sperm counts are record low in the West. And then there's also 
problem of uh, many other sexual problems that come from low testosterone. So how would in this age of low testosterone a revolution would take place? And then there's the problem of too much drugs and hormones in the water. I mean, a lot of the strand stuff can also be I think traced to the food, to the chemicals they're putting into the food and the water. Many suspect that they put antidepressants and other pills en masse into the water. And the American population is heavily drugged, and drug addiction is, is at an all-time high. I mean, the Bolsheviks, the French revolutionaries, the successful revolutionaries throughout, throughout history were not high. I mean, they were, they were strong men with a clear mind. And the American population is heavily dazed. Can it truly rebel and win against the might of the American military? Then there's the problem of obesity. Obesity, I mean, 50% of the American male adult population is obese. So you have that. And, and it's hard to imagine an obese population carrying on four-generation warfare. I mean, obesity, I mean, four-generation warfare means engaging in guerrilla activities, going into the forest, having to forage, and to live on subsistence, waging highly mobile warfare. I mean, I can't see a, an obese population conducting all this. And then there's the bigger problem of entertainment distraction. A lot of the rebellions throughout history have been done by incel type people who, who have nothing to lose, who are willing to go into revolution. They have no wife, they have no family, they have no prospects, so they are not afraid to throw away their lives. They're not afraid to risk it all. But the problem is that while the West has a lot of incels, has a lot of this type of people, and Vladimir Lenin himself openly admitted that the reason the Bolsheviks at first promoted free sex was because it would create broken families and it would create a lot of incels who then could be mobilized to become Bolshevik revolutionaries. The problem is that in the modern age, a lot of this incel type people, a lot of these people who have nothing to lose, instead their energies are channeled towards distractions like the movie industry, the TV industry, the video game industry, all these industries who seem solely exist to distract the population with mindless entertainment. I mean, you can see the, the grown-up men who still watch anime or have uh, hordes of Star Wars toys in their rooms. Instead of their energies are not being projected towards positive ends, but they're being projected towards this last man ends, like you know, this bugman consumerism. So what would be his response to this? So th this would be my question to John Mark as to how a civil war can occur with these circumstances. I mean, yes, historically, no people has allowed themselves to be peacefully replaced by a foreign population. Historically, there wasn't a lack of testosterone. There wasn't a mass obesity problem in any historic societies. There weren't drugs and hormones in the water, and there weren't massive entertainment industries to distract the male population. And there wasn't the phenomenon of this type of controlled opposition that keeps on sapping energy from, I mean, real radical causes. But leaving the intelligence question aside, what could possibly trigger a civil war? A civil war would only start under two scenarios. One, several states openly defy the federal government and refuse to carry out a policy or law. The federal government doesn't buck and they send in the troops to put down the rebellion, thus engaging in open war against its states and devolving the country into a state of civil war. Second, a critical mass of the population, let's say 5 to 15 percent or more, say openly rebels against the government. They refuse to obey a law or pay taxes and engages in civil disobedience. The federal government doesn't back down and orders the mass crackdown by the police and the military and armed resistance ensues. Now, unless there's a genuine nationalist party or third positionist party contesting elections and holding power, the scenario one won't happen. The GOP is essentially Democrat light and they're beholden to their Zionist donors like Sheldon Adelson. They'll never disobey their masters in DC. It's still plausible though, if the GOP collapses in the 2020s after Trump, and the third position party steps up and starts winning elections in local government, then it's feasible. I can foresee a scenario in the late 2020s or the early 2030s where there is a third positionist party and they hold many state governorships, perhaps even hold senate, senate elections or mayorships, and 
even our conversations is entirely plausible but it's not something we have in the current scenario and how far they can keep this two party con going is any man's guess my guess is that after trump goes the gop is going to implode now scenario 2 is more likely in the hyper woke era the democrats are unable to dial the cultural marxism down and cross the limit somehow and the mass rebellion ensues something unimaginable so out of touch that the people ultimately get fed up and they revolt for this to happen there has to be an event so extreme so intolerable that people rebel despite the drugs alcohol fat degeneracy video games and marvel movies what could trigger that here are some scenarios i think that could be plausible a sudden tax hike on normal population goes up to 40 to 60% and the people refuse to file taxes anymore a large reparation tax on the whites angry whites refuse to fil- file taxes the federal government or the supreme court legalizes pedophilia and enacts hate speech laws against pedophilia a green new deal that taxes people to death shuts down industry and mass and forces people to eat worms and causes mass food or energy crisis an unpopular constitutional amendment like mandatory diversity housing or miscegenation a ban on automobiles or huge ga- gas price hike due to green laws like France and the gilets jaunes or another huge bailout of the banks and wall street during the next great recession or depression these are the scenarios in which i think a rebellion could break out and i think this second scenario is more likely but, but i would like to hear it better from john mark who has created such a steer in the internet sphere and i like his analysis and i'd love to get a feedback on this if any of you can get his attention to this video i would greatly appreciate it That's all for today. Thanks for watching. If you like my content, please share and subscribe and you can also support me on Patreon. The links are in the description below. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.